Right, we are re-editing some of the first pictures I ever took and that I ever edited. Obviously, we did that shoot the other day with the first car I ever shot, and obviously I redid to see how good I was at shooting, position and location-wise. I thought we'd do the same thing for editing, so I just quickly found these as well. This is the first ever picture I took of anything when I first got my Sony a6400 like two years ago. I got this, first ever picture that I ever took. It, it is what it is. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. I think I got this one as well. Wow, it's not even in focus. But the ones that we're actually going to be using, because obviously we like shooting cars, so obviously the first couple of car shoots I did was here. So I did my 350, which I miss. I used to have this car here. We did this. This was my edit that I did on it back then, two years ago. Uh, and then we've got this BMW M3 that I did a shoot with. This was how I edited that back then, two years ago as well. And then we finished off with these rollers, which I also edited two years ago from that date. So yeah, we are going to hopefully do a better job and then we'll put them side by side and see how we've got better, I guess. Obviously I didn't have presets at that time, so I could just use my presets and get some nice edits on there straight away, as you can see, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna edit from scratch because that's what we haven't done in a while. <laughs> I've been using presets way too much. So for me, we might as well keep the golden look to this. It's no point trying to change that because it's already such a harsh color anyway. We might as well just leave it. So I'm actually gonna up the contrast a little bit. We'll bring down the highlights just because I like, you can actually bring back a lot of the sky. And I normally look at the car to see if it's affecting the car that much, but it, as you can see, it isn't really. It's slightly dull in it, but nothing too crazy. So I will whack the highlights all the way down. I'm gonna keep the shadows. We're gonna go for like a darker, moodier one. So we'll keep the shadows down, whites up a little bit, blacks down a little bit. From there, I might even bring the texture back. And then, will dehaze work? Oh yeah. See, that's what I would have done ages ago. <laughs> I don't think that's what I did, I can't even remember. I'll put it on the screen again. I don't think it was, but I do remember struggling to edit this photo ages ago, so we'll see if we can do a better job this time. I might even desaturate it now. Tone curve. <sighs> to be honest, like that, I've, I filmed an editing course the other day, which is available now, like a basic editing course for when you've just got Lightroom, you don't know what you're doing. That's for that, it's linked down below. But, I don't really use it. I was on about it in the course. I don't really use the tone curve that much. I don't really like it. I do like it, but I prefer to use these down here, the color wheels, which we will do in a second. So yeah, I'm actually gonna not touch the tone curve at all. I'm just gonna mess around with these colors. I'm gonna try and make the orange pop in the headlights a little bit more, so it's boost the saturation of that. And that, I'm gonna get rid of the greens because I like this to be orange as well. And then we'll pull out these. And then let's just go to the orange. Let's try and make that a little bit more harsh. So about there. And let's try to bring the blue. Let's try to get that paint popping a little bit more because it is a bit blue, but the settings I've always on have actually messed up that paint of the car. So maybe we will bring this uh, this saturation back up. Mm, it's not really doing a lot though. We'll see if we can select that later. But let's move into some of these. Again, with these, I just move them around, to be honest, until they look cool. So I just spin these around until I'm happy with them. Try to find something like this more neutral. Highlights are already orange, so I might as well just leave them as they are. Um, and I, like I was saying in the editing course, I'm saying it as if you've seen it, but if you add something, like there's orange on here, so if I just keep adding orange, 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 it's just gonna look too stupid, and it's just gonna pile it all up. So what I like to do, like I did with those shadows, is bring a bit of blue into it and do something opposite instead of just keep adding the same colour. I always make sure I do that when it comes to forcing stuff into an image. Um, sharpening, don't really need to do. I think I'm just gonna come down to camera calibration. This is one of those photos where it's kinda like already edited for me, do you know what I mean? It's kinda like the colours are already bang on, you don't really need to do much to it unless you wanna force something into it, you can just sort of leave it. I might even bring that down to that side, actually, that's quite cool. You can just kind of leave it as it is and just sort out the exposure and then just add some adjustments, which I'm gonna do now to make it look a bit more cooler. So we've got a natural shadow here, so we might as well exaggerate that even more. And we'll minus the car, so minus subject. And then we'll just start to bring the exposure down even more. Just to feel like it's gonna add that nice moody look. Is my brightness all the way up on my TV? Yeah. And then we'll bring some more shadows in. And then I'm going to do the same thing from where the sky is. Oh, I know it's getting a bit dark, but I can change all this in a second. And then we'll bring a bit of 
exposure up and then you come to the haze and you can add like a bit of haze in as if it was like foggy like a little sun strip and then we'll bring that more to the orange side because it's looking a bit white a bit golden I might even add some shadows to that slightly just to bring it down a little bit to about there it doesn't help that the car's not that in focus that's my fault I didn't really do that properly let's just do the subject now on its own and let's I don't know I just feel like it's not oh here we go here we go there we go that's what the car was it was like that sort of blue there we go now I'm just going to bring the general exposure up on the whole image together to about there I think I'm I think I'm happy with that here's the before from two years ago <laughs> here's my new edit from now I don't know if I did a good job or not but that's kind of where I felt like I want to put that photo right now so yeah we'll leave that at that let's move on to let's move on to the, free, the 350 I regret selling this so much I, if I had this for the YouTube channel this would be so cool now but I got rid of it it was too expensive to run and I was going away anyway so it was just gonna be sat on the garage on the on the driveway but it's such a sick car so for this one here's the original edit from two years ago this is what I did with it for me I think I'm going to yeah I'm gonna go for that more gray sort of look for this one but the car is catching a lot of exposure right now so what we're gonna do is again pull down the highlights I will expose for the background and then we'll bring the car back in a second does that make sense so I'm going to ignore the car even though it's overexposed and we're just gonna edit around it and then I'll select that on its own so let's just add some stuff in the background I don't want to go too nuts I just want to go for more of like a desaturated grey look and we might actually yeah because I want that sort of blue tint in the shadows yeah, 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 yeah. It's the tone curve so sensitive like you can literally move it the tiniest bit and it'll bring you something in yeah that's looking nice lift the blacks up maybe about there and then maybe get a hint of blue a small bit there and then a small bit here nice I'm a fan of that and then let's get the temperature just pull it a little bit more towards that bit there I find myself the more I edit photos now I feel like compared to what I used to is I take away a lot of stuff now like I find a color that I like and then I will pull the rest of them out I don't really go too much into like I used to want to touch every single colour. I don't even remember what the edit was that I did before. So you can obviously see it on screen. But for me, I'm going for that grey, slightly orange, slightly blue. I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up, if I'm being completely honest. But this is kind of where I'm wanting to go with it. I'm just sort of... This is what I do. I'm trying to explain it, but this is what I do. I literally just move stuff around and look at it until I like the look of it. We didn't have this before, two years ago, the AI enhanced, so we can get rid of some of that denoise and it will enhance the out of focus bits. So let's just let that quickly do its thing. I think I was using, when I first started, I was using Lightroom Cloud, like the cloud version, which doesn't have as many options as Lightroom Classic. And I remember I kept seeing YouTube videos of like North Borders and everyone having this different program. And I was like, why does theirs look different? Why is mine like looking like this? And then I realized there's a, there's a different version that's got a lot more features in it. Right, so we've got that. Uh, let's go to the camera calibration. This is one of those things where once you've set up your photo, camera calibration just sets a whole tone into your image without even having to do anything. It just makes it look so much cooler. And affects a lot of it just by shifting some of these around. So I'm going to go for that more green. I'm feeling that. And then we'll pull the saturation down a little bit. That's one thing I noticed. I'm always desaturating the, um, the photos. Yeah, from there we're gonna grab some adjustments. So again, I haven't I haven't heavily edited it, but what I am gonna do now is my little trick that I do on cars. So I lift the shadows all the way up, and obviously that looks ridiculous. But then you just bring down the exposure, and you can get it to where it originally was sat. So like it's not gonna look like that because obviously that's obvious that you've put exposure on it. But you can find the level where it actually is its natural color again, which is about there and then you've now got the shadows up so now we can see 
these little stick on eBay things that I put on the wheels, which actually do look sick. Like for three quid off eBay, they do look sick. Oh, I miss this car. Damn it. Um, but yeah, I always do that. Shadows all the way up on the subject and then bring the exposure back down to where the paint originally sat at. And you get this really cool popping effect that doesn't look too unrealistic. From there, same as the last one really, we're just gonna do a gradient from up here with a light source, not as crazy as before. A bit orange in there. Yeah, and then a bit of haze here. This is just gonna make your photos look so much more 3D when you do this sort of stuff to them. Add in these little light sources and shadow sources. And obviously you could do a radial gradient as well. Mm, do I actually want that to cover the car? Normally I'd minus the subject, but I think I actually want that back wheel to be a bit more, a bit darker. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go about there. And then we'll go, yeah, we'll leave the temperature where it is. And um, yeah, we'll leave that where it is. We'll just get the shadows down a bit as well. I do like to have the car sometimes being affected. It makes him for more of a natural shadow to have that in there. Could go a bit stronger on the light source. So let's bring that in a bit more up here. And then I think I'm happy with that. I am going to off camera go into Photoshop and get rid of the bins and maybe even the house. So this is what it looks like with the Photoshop, which I never would have done before. But now I do that to my photos. I clean them up um, with the new AI stuff, but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. It's not even a tutorial, but I'm not going to waste your time doing that. That's what it looks like. So yeah, two years ago, now photoshopped. I think that's quite nice. I think I, I can edit a lot quicker now because it's just a case of not doing as much. You don't actually need to do too much to photos unless you're really forcing something into it. So yeah, I think, I mean, I hope I've done a better job. <laughs> Imagine if I've just done worse in two years. Who knows? Let's do this three of this BMW. Let's do this one. I'm pretty sure... This one I tried to do like a black and white photo and then just have the car be the only colour in the screen because I remember seeing it on Instagram and I was like, that's sick. I don't remember if it looks cool or not. Probably doesn't. Let's do kind of the same thing, but make it more grey like we did with the 350. Make it more grey and a little bit. So we want it dull, so we'll bring that out. Shadows I want all the way up. I might lift the blacks. I'm still going to go for that black and white vibe, but I'm not going to separate the car. I'm going to have everything together be black and white and more like stone. Um, how do I explain it? Maybe I'll bring the blacks down, actually. Like that stone, cold, grey sort of edit. So we'll try and do that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually do it, but all we can do is try. So let's do this. Let's... Desaturate these a little bit. Just all of the colours in general. And then let's bring them all to the harsher side a little bit. And then I think this is where I'm going to be able to get that colour in the most that I'm looking for. Go about there, green. Sorry if I'm a bit quiet in this video, but it is kind of just, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be talking, but I am just trying to hopefully just enjoy watching because I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do this. Obviously, this is how I normally edit. I just sit here and move stuff around. Go about there. Then we'll go to the camera calibration, which is always the fun bit. Yo, <laughs> the car actually looks really cool, that colour. I actually really like that colour, but I'm not on the car. So how can I do that? Minus. I can't select. Can I select the subject and bring the subject back to its original colour? How can I sort the car out? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no, I want that colour. Look, look at that. That looks sick in the background, but not the car. Wait, maybe I can go... To the blues here change okay here we go here we go here we go yeah there we go 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 cool car's back <laughs> but now we've got this nice like orangey vibe with the gray here i'm liking that i'm liking that i'm liking that that's what's so cool about the camera calibration it can just completely change your photo do we need any of this let's desaturate that let's bring that up a little bit Bosh, I think I need to add a little bit more shadow. 
in now we'll do that with the with the adjustments so let's add some adjustments in let's go linear gradient again i'm obsessed with linear gradients as you can probably tell i'm just going to add a little bit there another one here nothing crazy but just a little one and then i'll brighten up the top bit here coming down onto the car just a tad And then maybe even bring the saturation down a little bit more. I think I'm happy with that, to be honest. I think I'm going to leave that one there. I think that's all right. So this was two years ago, and this is now. This is where I'm feeling right now that I want this photo to go to. So hopefully, overall, I've done a good job. You should go and do that yourself. Go get some old photos and re-edit them, because you'd be surprised how better you've got. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you go back, you actually might really, really like the photo more than you did before, because you can test out some new... It's just cool to see, just to show you that you've got better. Do you know what I mean? Um, also, I might as well plug while I'm here. I've got Lightroom presets. I could have used them, but I didn't. This is why this video felt so weird, because I haven't edited a photo in so long, because all I do is use my presets. So I've got a V2 pack, there's 25 in a pack. I don't really have a style that I stick to. I'm all over the place, which is what I made this preset pack all about. So there's five categories that are gonna cover all different styles, all different lighting conditions. There's even environment specific ones for like actual interiors of cars, a harsh sun, a countryside, nighttime, do you know what I mean? It's one of those packs that's gonna cover you for every situation. So I'll show you a couple now that I think might work on this photo. So like classic should work quite well, yeah. It's got that nice orange tint. Obviously you do some adjustments, bring down those highlights and sort your photo out from there. You could also do Africa, is that gonna work? For the more of that orange, richer vibe you can see there coming into the photo looks quite nice you could do cinema that probably work here more of a blue gray tint probably bring the highlights down they're normally one click wonders sometimes like on this photo here you have to obviously adjust like exposure and highlights other than that the the, the colors should be there and then there's also a simple section for people that don't really want like mental presets you could just press one of these, so let's go that one. Yeah, let's go that one. So that's gonna just do the basic adjustments, little bit of a color correction in the tone curve, slight bit of color grading, but it's gonna be really basic, just as a nice base for you to just get that nice, simple edit to your photo to then go through and edit it yourself. So yeah, that's the pack. Might as well put that in there. It's all in the description along with my editing course, basic editing course. So if you've just got Lightroom, you don't know what to do, I can talk you through all of that in the course. Other than that, thanks for subscribing. This is the last video of 2024. <laughs> we started this year, we're finishing this year, and yeah, we got to 1.5K from starting it in January. So I appreciate everyone subscribing and I'm gonna do the same into next year. So we'll see if we can get the channel monetized and we'll just keep the shit going. So yeah, I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you later.